Well, howdy there, friends. Today, we're embarking on a remarkable journey to catch a glimpse of how the cast members from Sanford and Son have changed over the years. We'll be revealing their true identities and ages, and you're in for a real treat as we compare their youthful days on the show to the present year of 2023. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all ready for this ride? Let's get this journey rolling. Number 1. Red Fox as Fred Sanford While Fred Sanford may wear a grumpy and quarrelsome mask, beneath that exterior lies a showman of the highest order. His penchant for theatrics knows no bounds, and he often amplifies his actions to grandiose proportions for maximum impact. One of his trademark moves involves feigning a heart attack, a dramatic ploy he frequently employs to achieve his desires, especially in his interactions with Lamont. It's worth noting that Red Fox, the gifted actor who brought Fred Sanford to life, left an indelible mark on an emerging generation of comedians, including illustrious figures like Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor. From the way that Fox was born, nobody would have ever guessed that he'd later become one of the most monumental comedians ever. Born into poverty in 1922, Red Fox bore the birth name John Elroy Sanford. His distinctive stage name, Red Fox, stemmed from a nickname inspired by his ruddy complexion. At the age of 13, Fox left home, embarking on a journey across the country where he played the washboard for a band. However, his stint with the band was short-lived, and by the time he reached 16, he had made his way to New York City. During his stay in New York City, Fox honed his comedic skills, performing at various black theaters and nightclubs, where he had the opportunity to meet influential figures, including Malcolm X. In 1951, Red Fox formed a partnership with Slappy White, and together, they delivered live comedy performances until 1955. This collaboration not only marked the beginning of their lifelong friendship, but also laid the groundwork for their joint appearances on Sanford and Son and the Red Fox Comedy Hour. Fox's comedic journey led him to Los Angeles, where he recorded his stand-up comedy. Remarkably, his initial record paid him a mere $25. By 1972, Red Fox had a significant breakthrough when he was signed by Norman Lear to create Sanford and Son, a series inspired by the BBC comedy Steptoe and Son. His role as Fred G. Sanford became legendary, captivating audiences with his comedic brilliance. Fox continued in this role until his departure from the show in 1977. After his time as Fred Sanford concluded, Red Fox embarked on a new venture, The Red Fox Show, showcasing his enduring talent. His final project was The Royal Family, where he portrayed the character Alfonso Royale, Red Fox's journey from humble beginnings to becoming a monumental comedian left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment, and his comedic legacy continues to resonate with audiences today. Fred Sanford played by Red Fox when he was 50 years old. Sadly, on October 11, 1991, during a break from rehearsals for the royal family, Fox suffered a heart attack on the set. Number 2. Demon Wilson as Lamont Sanford. In a world that often spirals into comedic chaos, Lamont emerges as the unwavering pillar of sanity. He embodies the tranquility amidst the tempest, maintaining a composed demeanor when all else descends into uproar. Lamont is akin to that dependable friend you can always rely on to inject reason into the most bewildering situations. While others may allow their egos to lead them astray, Lamont possesses the wisdom to seek assistance when necessary. He's unafraid to extend a hand and declare, we could use a little support here. Acknowledging one's need for help is a mark of great character, and Lamont sets an example that persuades even the most obstinate individuals to embrace the notion of lending and receiving a helping hand. Playing straight man to a comedy legend like Red Fox would have seemed an unenviable task for most actors, but Diamond Wilson rose to the occasion as the short-tempered Lamont Sanford on the hit sitcom Sanford and Son, NBC 1971-77.
While Lamont Sanford's character largely revolved around reacting to his father's eccentric antics, Wilson's dry delivery and strong presence made him the perfect fit for the role. His portrayal of Lamont marked the pinnacle of his acting career, with subsequent endeavors fading into relative obscurity. In 1984, Wilson made a significant life change by becoming an ordained minister, embracing religion as a new path. Despite his varied journey, Wilson's enduring performance on Sanford and Son continued to resonate with viewers, ensuring his lasting legacy in the world of television entertainment. Lamont Sanford played by Demon Wilson when he was 26 years old, and now he is 78 years old. Number 3. Lawanda Page as Aunt Anderson. Here come the force of nature we know as Fred Sanford, a Baptist tornado of wit and wisdom. Now, she might not crack a smile often, but when she opens her mouth, you'll hear the voice of reason, no holds barred. But before she graced our TV screens as the unforgettable Aunt Esther on Sanford and Son, there was Lawanda Page, a comedic dynamo who set the comedy scene on fire with her unfiltered and raunchy humor. She was a force to be reckoned with, a comedic powerhouse who left audiences in stitches. Now, even after retiring the iconic Aunt Esther character, following the short-lived 1981 spin-off Sanford, Lawanda Page continued to grace our screens. She popped up in various TV shows and films, always adding her signature touch of sass and wisdom. She might have played variations of the sassy old woman persona, but one thing remained constant, her ability to make us laugh and think all at once. Lawanda Page initially gained recognition with her portrayal of the sanctimonious Aunt Esther on the popular sitcom Sanford and Son. However, prior to her mainstream success, she was a well-known figure among fans of African-American nightclub comedians and party records during the 1960s. In this earlier phase of her career, Page was known for her explicit and provocative stand-up comedy, reminiscent of the style popularized by Moms Mabley. Following her retirement from the Aunt Esther character, which occurred after the brief run of the 1981 spin-off series, Sanford, Lawanda Page continued to make appearances in various TV shows and films, in these roles, she often portrayed variations of her established persona as a sassy and outspoken older woman. Notable appearances included her role in Ice Cube's Friday and a recurring part in Martin Lawrence's highly acclaimed early 1990s sitcom, Martin. Aunt Anderson played by Lawanda Page when she was 53 years old. Unfortunately, Page died of a heart attack at age 81 following complications from diabetes on September 14, 2002. Number 4. Don Bexley as Bubba Bexley. With a last name like Bexley, you know this character was destined to bring some serious laughter into our lives. And that's precisely what he did. A comedic gem, he added his own special flavor of humor to the show, making him unforgettable. But here's where the laughter train really kept chugging along. When Red Fox and Demon Wilson bid farewell to Sanford and Son, NBC wasn't ready to let go of all that humor. They tried to keep the comedic fire burning with the spin-off series The Sanford Arms. And guess who was right there carrying the torch of laughter? That's right. Don Bexley and a talented cast, bringing us even more laughs and unforgettable moments to cherish. Those were the days, my friends. Don Bexley is best remembered for his portrayal of Bubba Bexley on the iconic television series Sanford and Son. Interestingly, his character's close relationship with Red Fox's character mirrored their real-life friendship. Despite the age proximity of their on-screen personas, Bexley was actually 12 years older than Red Fox. Don Bexley was a pioneering figure, becoming the first black stand-up comedian to perform at the prestigious Mountain Hotel. He began his career performing in theaters in both New York City and Los Angeles. Following his stint on Sanford and Son, 
Bexley continued to make appearances in various TV shows, including the spin-off series Sanford Arms, as well as popular shows like Cheers, Hunter, True Colors, and T.J. Hooker. He also played the role of Elston in Red Fox's final show, The Royal Family. Bexley's early success afforded him the opportunity to travel extensively, exploring destinations in Europe and Asia. He was called back by Red Fox to return to the United States for their movie Cotton Comes to Harlem in 1969. Subsequently, Fox enlisted Bexley once more in 1971 to join the cast of Sanford and Son. Bubba Bexley played by Don Bexley when he was 62 years old. Sadly, Bexley died of heart and kidney failure on April 15, 1997 at Hampton Centara Hospital. He was 87 years old. Number 5. Whitman Mayo as Grady Wilson Before Whitman Mayo became the unforgettable Grady Wilson, Red Fox's quirky and anxious best friend on the beloved show Sanford and Son, he had already left his mark as a member of the Lafayette Theater in vibrant Harlem. His talents graced various television programs, although mostly in minor roles. Yet, despite his diverse contributions to the world of entertainment, it was undoubtedly a challenge to break free from the enduring association with his beloved character, Grady. Don Bexley is best remembered for his portrayal of Bubba Bexley on the iconic television series Sanford and Son. Interestingly, his character's close relationship with Red Fox's character mirrored their real-life friendship. Despite the age proximity of their on-screen personas, Bexley was actually 12 years older than Red Fox. Born on March 10, 1910, in Jamestown, Virginia, Don Bexley came from a family with diverse talents. His father was a biblical scholar, while his mother was a classical violinist. Bexley's friendship with Red Fox and Slappy White developed during their touring days in New York City's black theaters and nightclubs. Notably, Bexley was not only friends with Slappy White, but also served as the old dance partner of Sammy Davis. Junior Don Bexley was a pioneering figure, becoming the first black stand-up comedian to perform at the prestigious Mountain Hotel. He began his career performing in theaters in both New York City and Los Angeles. Bexley's early success afforded him the opportunity to travel extensively, exploring destinations in Europe and Asia. He was called back by Red Fox to return to the United States for their movie Cotton Comes to Harlem in 1969. Subsequently, Fox enlisted Bexley once more in 1971 to join the cast of Sanford and Son. In a poignant moment, Don Bexley served as one of the honorary pallbearers at Red Fox's funeral in 1991. He passed away in 1995, succumbing to heart and kidney failure. Grady Wilson played by Whitman Mayo when he was 43 years old. Sadly, Mayo died of a heart attack on May 22, 2001, at Atlanta's Grady Memorial Hospital. He was 70 years old. Number 6. Nathaniel Taylor as Rollo Larson Nathaniel Taylor, the talented actor who introduced us to the unforgettable Rollo Larson, Lamont Sanford's best friend, graced our screens with a character that embodied the essence of coolness. From his slick style to his smooth demeanor, Rollo had us laughing, grooving, and yearning for a friend just like him. However, as life's bittersweet symphony plays on, we must also remember that Nathaniel Taylor has departed from us, leaving behind a legacy of lofter and memorable moments. Nathaniel Taylor, known for his role as Rollo Larson, was not only a castmate, but also a close free end of Red Fox. Taylor embarked on his acting career just a year prior to Fox, establishing himself as an experienced television actor by the time he joined the cast of Sanford and Son. During the early stages of his career, Taylor operated under the name Jita Hadi, taking on roles in various shows and movies, including Listen to a Man, The Bold Ones, The Senator, Black Girl, As Above As Below, and Trouble Man. Before adopting the name Nathaniel Taylor, 
he briefly used the moniker Richard Lawson for his role in Willie Dynamite. By the time he appeared on Harry O., Taylor had transitioned to using the name Nathaniel Taylor, the name by which he would be credited on the show he shared with Red Fox. Following his time on Sanford and Son, Nathaniel Taylor continued to make appearances in several shows, including Passing Through, What's Happening, Sanford, The Hunter, 227, and The Red Fox Show. The cancellation of The Red Fox Show, due to low ratings, served as a turning point for Nathaniel Taylor, leading him to decide to step away from the spotlight and focus on enjoying other aspects of life. He spent the remainder of his life alongside his wife, Loretta Taylor. The couple had four daughters and three sons, and their children went on to give them six grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. Rollo Larson played by Nathaniel Taylor when he was 34 years old. Sadly, he died from the complications of heart attack it on February 27, 2019 in Los Angeles at the age of 80. Number 7. Lynn Hamilton as Donna Harris Lynn Hamilton, originally hailing from Mississippi, is a seasoned character actress with a career spanning over 60 film and television productions. Her entry into the entertainment industry began with a small role in the acclaimed 1959 John Cassavetes film Shadows. However, it wasn't until a decade later that she established herself as a regular presence on screen. In the early 1970s, Hamilton started making guest appearances on various TV programs, including notable shows like Mannix, Gunsmoke, and The Bill Cosby Show. In 1972, she gained recognition for her recurring role in the popular sitcom Sanford and Son. The following year, she took on a semi-regular role in the family drama series The Waltons. Hamilton successfully balanced both parts for several years. Her versatility as an actress shone through in her performances, and in 1979, she joined the cast of Roots The Next Generations. Throughout the subsequent decades, Hamilton remained an active figure in the industry. She continued to make appearances in various TV series, from one-off spots in shows like The Golden Girls and NYPD Blue, to more substantial roles in sitcoms like Two on Twee Seven, and later, the legal drama The Practice. Impressively, she continued to pursue her passion for acting well into her 70s. Donna Harris played by Lynn Hamilton, when she was 42 years old, and now she is 93 years old. Number 8. Hal Williams as Officer Smith Hal Williams, recognized for his tall stature, distinctive mustache, and endearing on-screen presence, became a familiar face on 1970s and 80s television. His roles often cast him as relatable, everyday individuals who find themselves caught up in chaotic scenarios, ultimately revealing their warm and lovable nature. One of Williams's most iconic roles was portraying the husband who navigates the challenges posed by a building filled with meddling women, including his wife, played by Marla Gibbs, in the delightful NBC sitcom 227. This late 80s hit show showcased his comedic talent and affable charm, solidifying his status as a beloved actor on television during that era. Officer Smith played by Hal Williams when he was 34 years old, and now he is 85 years old. Number 9. Howard Platt as Officer Hoppy. Hopkins. Decked out in shades and exuding swagger, Hopkins is the epitome of cool among the town's cops. His dance moves could rival Michael Jackson's, and his smile could brighten the darkest of corners. Even in the face of Fred's wild antics, Hopkins remains unflappable. His composuri is unwavering, and he possesses the rare combination of nerves of steel and a heart of gold. Hopkins is the neighborhood's guardian angel, always prepared to extend a helping hand and keep trouble at bay. Howard Platt has graced both comedic and dramatic television shows with his versatile talent. In addition to his memorable role as Hoppy on Sanford and Son, he has left his mark in various guest appearances and series regular roles. Some of his notable television credits include portraying Dr. Phil Newman in six episodes of The Bob Newhart Show, Max in Alice, Major Ted Spector in Mass H, and Judge Jonathan Stockfish in Evening Shade.
Impressively, he took on five different characters on Barney Miller. Platt's contributions extend to the big screen as well, with roles in movies like T.R. Baskin, Nixon, The Cat from Outer Space, and Norma Jean and Marilyn. His career is a testament to his talent and versatility in both television and film. Officer Hoppy Hopkins, played by Howard Platt when he was 34 years old, and now he is 85 years old. Number 10. Gregory Sierra as Julio Fuentes. As the proprietor of a nearby junkyard, Julio frequently partakes in amicable banter and lighthearted competition with Fred. His sharp wit shines through in his clever retorts, infusing their exchanges with humor. Julio's character is defined by his affable and inviting demeanor. He shares an authentic connection with Fred and readily accompanies him on his escapades and schemes. Gregory Sierra was a talented TV and film character actor, known for his versatile performances. He often portrayed Latino characters and became a recognizable face in the 1970s and early 1980s. Some of his notable roles include Julio Fuentes on Sanford and Son, Detective Sergeant Chano Amenguale on Barney Miller, Dr. Tony Menzies on AES Hudson Street, and the memorable El Puerco on Soap. Sierra's career began with a bit part as a gorilla in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, 1970, and continued with roles like Garcia in Getting Straight, alongside Dustin Hoffman in the same year. In 1973, he played Carlos the bartender in The Towering Inferno, meeting a dramatic demise as he was sucked into the flood from a broken water tower. Throughout the late 1980s and into the 1990s, Sierra's work shifted primarily to TV movies and feature films. He appeared in projects such as the miniseries Something Is Out There, the TV movie Donor, and feature films like Deep Cover, Honey I Blew Up the Kid, Hot Shots, Part Do, and A Low Down Dirty Shame. Sierra's career left an indelible mark on both the small and big screens. Julio Fuentes played by Gregory Sierra when he was 35 years old. Sadly, Sierra died on January 4, 2021, after a long battle with stomach and liver cancer, three weeks before his 84th birthday. We really love the cast of The Sanford and Son. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on the next video.